My name is Kiyoshi Nagata. I'm a professional taiko performer, taiko player, and I've been doing that for the last 40 years. I'm um, Nikkei Sansei, which means I'm a third generation Japanese Canadian. I was born and raised in Richmond Hill, which is not too far north of Toronto. When I was very young, um, I remember hearing a lot of Japanese music in my family household. My parents listened to a lot of Enka, um, Japanese popular folk, folk ballads, I guess you would call it. And also, my grandmother on my mother's side played shamisen. And my mother and her sisters, and, and also my sister, um, did odori, Japanese dance. Um, they actually had, my mom and her sisters actually had a kind of a family odori kind of group, I guess. And my grandmother would play shamisen to accompany their dancing. So, growing up, I I was always exposed to both kind of more traditional Japanese music, but also popular Japanese music. I was quite involved at the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center growing up. So I had a lot of both like Nikkei friends um, from Japan and Canada. And they would be listening to like, I guess, J-pop artists of the time. Even though I didn't really understand the lyrics, I mean, I just heard a lot of it growing up. So that was kind of my very early years. Um, but then in high school, I would be listening to much more popular Western music. In university, um, I was actually studying political science and economics in university at the University of Toronto. And I got much more interested in like Western or European classical music. So I used to see a lot of um, orchestra music Toronto Symphony or other groups that were coming into town. So, and, and I also enjoyed listening to a lot of jazz as well. So yeah, I've kind of run the spectrum from Japanese to pop to classical. In university, I was also getting into what, what they called world music, which is not like a really popular way of describing that music anymore because world music just means anything that's not European music, I guess. But basically like cultural music, I was getting into like African drumming or Indian drumming and Indonesian gamelan. I, I really enjoyed kind of um, hearing new sounds that I've never heard before. So I guess all of those kind of experiences growing up has kind of um, fused into my own music. So what I do is I, I play taiko, but you wouldn't call it traditional taiko. Um, you may know that like taiko as a performing art is actually fairly new, only within the last 40 or 50 years um, that it's become kind of a stage performance with groups and you know choreography and new compositions. But before that, taiko was mainly used as a functional instrument, like for festivals or for religious ceremonies or for harvest time or whatever. So what I do is I, with my group is we, we try to learn about kind of the traditional, the, the folk traditions of, of taiko, but we don't practice it and we don't perform it. We just use that as a foundation and to create our own music. And so being in Toronto and having all those musical influences, I think a lot of that has kind of been fused into my own compositions. Right now our ensemble has maybe 110, 120 original compositions that we've made over the last 20 years. Uh, myself and uh, uh, Ms. Aki Takahashi, who's the associate director, um, have composed most of those pieces. So part of that is in our compositions that we don't want to just be repeating the same music 
over and over again, year after year. Um, we want to always develop new music and challenge ourselves um, in the composition process. Part of it is in performance, I guess, and how we present our music. Um, it's not just a music concert, but more of a theatrical presentation. Uh, we don't announce the songs in our concert. We try to have seamless transitions from one song to the other. Um, so it, it becomes more of an experience as opposed to just just only a music concert, I guess. I guess the third part would be collaboration, um, to be able to work with other musicians um, so that we can learn. When we do learn from one another, that also gets infused into our music and our presentation. Our group has worked with tabla drummers, contemporary dancers, storytellers, jazz musicians, orchestras, Korean drummers, you know, we every year we try to cl collaborate with someone different. And part of that process is not only to discover what's similar about our music, but also what makes it different, and to use those things to our advantage when we collaborate with one another. Um, so I guess that, I mean, all those three things, collaboration, performance, and composition, those are ways in which we try to create a new voice for the taiko and we try to rejuvenate the art form. Uh, if we don't do that, my fear is that it's just, you know, going to be very re repetitive and um, stagnant. And so we want this to continue, continue to evolve and to grow. Collaborations are always, can be very risky. Um, sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not so successful if, if it's not approached in a, in, in a good way. I think part of it is just figuring out the right people to work with is, is an important part of it, to make sure you're on the same page. Um, but you know, we've had collaborations that have been, I guess you could say less successful than others. Um, but ultimately, whether it's good or bad, you learn from it and, and um, you can always take something away from it as well. You know, especially in a city like Toronto, which is very like multicultural, multi-ethnic, you know, I think the city um, allows you a lot of opportunity to find local artists that are practicing different genres of music. So for example, you know, if, if our group were in Japan, I think it'd be very hard to find a tabla ensemble in Japan to work with, you know. Um, but here, like, we're working with, like, people who have really grounded in, in their traditions and have studied with masters from their home country. Um, so I think, you know, it's a great opportunity being in the city to work with those types of musicians. Um, and I think, it really sends a positive message when we're able to collaborate with, with those artists to, to the audiences. Um, that music ultimately should bring people together. Um, that, you know, in many ways we're much more similar than we are different. Um, music, you know, it's, it's kind of cliche, but music's a universal language. So when we collaborate with these other kind of ethnic uh, music groups we don't we don't write our compositions using western notation it's all by um, like it's an oral tradition so it's all by route um, and so you know we're able to work with people even though you know we have different ways of learning and understanding music but somehow we're able to make that connection um, and that's very liberating I think that uh, you know two different groups from very different backgrounds can get together and make music together. And so I think it's very joyful and I think it's very positive and hopefully that that um, is reflected to the audiences as well and that they can get that message that, you know, we're all in this one big ship <laughs> and, uh, you know, let's, let's go on an adventure together.
when all the lockdown started to happen last year, well, first of all, we had like a lot of our concerts that were already booked cancelled,、um, which meant a huge loss in revenues for our group. And also, we, we teach public courses out of our studio, and we had to cancel all of those classes. Like all arts organizations,、um, we were lucky in that we pivoted quite quickly、um, to kind of digital、um, dissemination. So, one thing that、um, we were really fortunate about is before the pandemic, we had applied for a grant from the Canada Council for the Arts. Um, to explore how、um, cultural artistic practices and artistic groups could migrate their practices to digital platforms. And this was before the pandemic. And then the pandemic happened, we got the grant. One of the things we had worked on previously with some technologists was how to be able to teach Taiko to kids in remote communities where it's Too difficult for teachers to go out and teach or to bring taiko. Like, how can how can kids experience taiko、um, remotely and digitally? So, we created a way in which kids could actually use their cell phone. It was an app that we designed、uh, because all cell phones have a, some, something in it that detects vibration. So, you would put your phone on a surface. And it would trigger、um, Taiko sound samples as you played on the surface, basically. And we would have a lesson embedded within the cell phone so kids could learn how to play and they can actually hear the drums through their, their earphones. And at the same time, you could wear what was called a haptic feedback vest. So you would wear a vest and you can actually feel the vibrations as you're playing. So, you know, those were things that we were working on. During the pandemic, and the prototypes kind of came to fruition. They were working, and we were actually able to use it.、Um, we were doing some school performances、um, that had to be cancelled. So, we were using this technology to teach kids uh, uh, during the pandemic. And also, we had some、um, Toronto Park shows that we were supposed to do. And instead of doing workshops in person, people could. You know, use their phone and actually do a lesson through their phones. So that was one way in which we pivoted. We did like a lot more kind of videos and we did a, an immersive 360 degree video where the performers were surrounding the camera.、Um, you could, using your cell phone or a, a VR set, you could actually move around and see different parts of the performance. We were really fortunate in that we. We're able to get funding to try new things like that.、Um, and that kept us actually really busy、um, with all those projects. And then moving forward, I mean, I'm just hoping everything kind of returns to normal at some point because、uh, even with advances in technology and, and all that, like, I think people are missing live performances. And that's The best way to experience、uh, Taiko for sure. I think any kind of music is to experience it live.、Um, I think all the digital stuff is okay, but、uh, it, it doesn't replace the real, the real thing.、Uh, my hope is that we can get back to perf- performing to full audiences again. You know, for me, it has and it will always be about bringing community together.、Um, whether I perform or compose or collaborate, it's always been about bringing people together、um, from diverse communities. I think music has that ability to, you know, just bring us all together. And so for me, that's. that's My wish moving forward is that,、um, you know, especially during the pandemic, there's a lot of anti Asian kind of racism going on,、um, but also there's a lot of anti Muslim racism, and of course, Black Lives Matter, and, you know, the
uh, indigenous residential schools, all that stuff. And, um, you know, I, it just, it's so disheartening sometimes, like, you know, during, sometimes during times of adversity, things can get really ugly. And, you know, I think music is one way it's, it can be a vehicle in which we can at least help to unify people. I've never seen really music divide people <laughs> so much. And, you know, it's always, I always think it's, it's easier to love one another than to hate one another because to hate people takes so much more energy and it leaves you with such a bad feeling inside. And I, I just don't get it sometimes. Um, and so, yeah, that would be my hibiki, I guess, that um, let the vibrations of Taiko kind of be felt by everyone who can hear it. And, um, you know, in, in Japan, it's, it's been said in ancient Japan that a, a Taiko would be set up in the middle of a village. I don't know if you've heard this. And the furthest that you could walk away from the village and still hear it, that's how the village boundaries were determined. So even in old Japan, the taiko was used to kind of define what community was, a sense of community. So anyone who could, who could hear the taiko became part of that community. So it's kind of in the same sense, like whenever we perform, people, people become part of a larger community. So that, that, that's my hibiki.